sit on your bolster, some blocks, get some height to your hips, like Tristan is demoing. Yeah, I know. Press your feet under your knees, flex your feet. <laughs> Place the hands on your thighs, lift your chest up. Exhale, drop the shoulders, move the head back. Press your hands into your thighs again. Draw your elbows back, back towards behind you a little. Exhale, stretch your back ribs in, side rib forward, front ribs up. Let the eyes close. All right, so we start another practice. Another day where we are willing to go past the external surface of thought and distraction and, and worry to something different. Something that can be challenging where we start to have to define how we feel, why we feel that way, and what we want to do with it, rather than just how should we feel, what should we do, and how should we deal with it. Remember, this is only about our internal process. We can't control how the world reacts to us, how the world sees us, how the world chooses to do its things. But what we can do is recognize all of those layers of ourself to give us a fuller, clearer picture so that no matter what we do, at least when we turn around and look at it, we go, go, I tried my best. The practice of yoga is a chance to do that. So when you start, you have the opportunity to kind of, you know, how do you mentally, emotionally feel in the pose? How do you mentally, emotionally feel about the pose after? Did you handle yourself in the pose and in the work with clarity? as to what you wanted. Did you ask the teacher the question you had in mind? Did you practice that pose that gave you challenges or did you just walk away from it? Eventually, we have no teacher. Time takes all things, or God forbid something worse, so we have to take what we get in the moments with our teacher and start to take the questions, the techniques, the ideas, and use them not to constantly revisit ourselves with the same thing, right? We change. The questions asked by our teachers won't always apply to us in the future, but they should inspire us to keep asking new questions of ourselves awakening our own inner teacher so that whatever comes up, we can be aware of who we are, how we choose to be. And how we are gonna move into the future, regardless of what the world is gonna ask of us or tell us to do. Take a nice deep breath in, bring your palms together at the chest, thumbs touching the sternum. Let the shoulders come down away from the neck, head still back. Elbows pulled in towards the ribs, so there's a lift of the rib cage. Blow them shortly three times and then we'll begin. Take a breath. Oh. Flex your feet. Back ribs in, side rib forward, front rib up. Oh. Bow your head for a moment. Salute the essence of yoga inside yourself. 
Put your hands into your lap. Let your head rise and your eyes open. All right, so nice to see everybody. Everyone's coming in. Very cool. All right, so let's go ahead. Grab a strap. If you don't have a strap, you use a belt, whatever you got. You can make a loop with it. As Tristan's going to do, she's going to make a loop with her belt. And tighten the loop up so the loop is going to be about the width of your shoulders, right, to the center of the front shoulder joint, right, that chromial shelf. So when you put your arms in the strap, your hands will be about shoulder width apart. So get your strap, and then if you know you have a tight low back or have low back pain, you want to sit on a block, not a bolster. If you have a bolster, you don't have a block, you only have a bolster, that'll be fine. But you know, even using big books, like, you know, I know we have the internet, you don't need that copy of Encyclopedia Britannica, you can sit on that. So you're going to take the block, you're going to sit, and I want you to bring the soles of the feet together and the knees wide into Baddha Konasana. Take a second to get all that together. So you're sitting on the brick, feet together, knees wide. Pull your heels close and don't forget to use your hands to scoot your hips forward just a little bit towards your heels also. Don't bring your little foot too much forward. Yeah, just like that. There you go. So what we're going to do, when you're seated on your brick in Baddha Konasana for a moment, I just want you to push the feet together. Don't worry about pushing the feet or the knees down. Try to connect as much of the sole of the foot as you can. If you've been in the class for the last two weeks of me being online, maybe three, I don't know, I'm losing track of time there. That idea of pushing through those points of your foot, the big toe bone, the pinky toe joint, and the center of the heel, can you do that on each foot so the big toes are actively pushing against each other, so you connect those joints. The pinky toe joints are actively pushing against each other in the center of the heel. One foot is going to tend to not want to do this as much as the other. And it's an issue with the Achilles, with the ankle joint, the hip, the knee. There's a whole host of stuff it could be. So the other thing, once you get the legs engaged, is on your own kind of recognizance, you have to kind of look at your shoulder in alignment with your thigh and hip. Tristan's shoulder is leaning forward past her hip joint line. She needs to actually lean back to right about there. So the shoulders over the hip instead of where she was pushing herself forward. If you're swaying the back forward, go back to where you were. If you're swaying forward in the back, all this is creating is a flatness of the lower lumbar and a flatness of the mid back. You will lose a lot of your upper back and lower back mobility. Your hips will actually go. And your hips will never open into the fullness of the pose. So you've got to not just tilt your shoulders back. It's not, you know, swaying to pull it. Try to stack the center line of the body. So, you know, your mid ribs are back, you're not slouching, nor are you over swayed forward. You're trying to kind of find that neutral point where you feel your body weight sit on those bones. And then, you know, you can kind of start feeling from there. So, even just this can be hard. Your knees may want to come up. You may feel like you have to work harder to push your feet together, right? Because when we lean forward, we can push the feet together from the groin and low back. Sitting in the actual center line here, you can't. You can't use your low back as much. You have to work your thighs, your calf, and all that other stuff that's really kind of, you know, not getting as much work. We want to break the habits of bad forward tilting posture. Because what we're going to do with getting up into your upper backs, you're going to need it. So everyone should be in the pose. Ooh, there's a John. Nice. Cool. Everybody. Let's see, Anamika, so nice for you to join us. Abhijit, Chael, Myra, Glinda. I'm not going to read off everybody, but everybody who's here, it's so nice to see everyone. Stu, cool. Stacy Scott, awesome. Sri, very cool. Ryan, as always, nice to see everybody. It's good on this rainy day. All right. So now that you're starting to warm up and you're starting to feel where it's getting hard. If you're watching Tristan, you've noticed her knees have started to descend ever so slightly the longer we're here. One of the things that actually releases the hip and groin is moving the, the large crossroads of joint, the shoulders in line with the crossroad of the hips. 
So it's not about us pushing or swaying the spine out, but it's actually giving us some lift. In classes where the teacher has you take your hands behind you and push your spine up, that's kind of the action they're asking you to do, but too often don't do it. I didn't ask you to do it. But too often we overextend the chest out. I'm asking you not to use your hands behind you, but to sit higher to whatever degree you have to, so this becomes naturally aware. You want your groin and hip and low back to be different? You gotta get out of this pressure from the backside action. Don't worry, you'll be here a lot. We're not gonna get out of this for a while. We haven't even started the arm stuff yet. All right. So now let's add to it. Keep your legs, keep your shoulder in line with your hips, stretch both arms out in front of you and take both arms straight up. Then you check in first with your feet. Are the big toes crossing together? And I don't say the big toe joint. I said the big toe bone that lands you right here, pushes against the other big toe. The joint will touch automatically. I want the salary to be in that big toe. Then I want your pinky toe joint as an extra distance. So I want this toe and this joint to work. Pushing the big toe and only uh, can contract the ankle too much. And then the center heel. And then with your arms up for the last 20 seconds, check in. Did your back press you forward? Or can you keep your ribs back so your shoulder and hip are in a line again? So you have to feel your legs work. Now your legs have to work twice as hard to hold your arms up too. Oh. Uh -huh. All right. So, lift, come on camera, you don't need that. <laughs> your alignment is fine. Try not to move your head forward, move your ear back, so your inner ear, shoulder, and hip are in a line. Then, tricep, move it back in line with the inner ear. A lot of times they'll say, push it back behind the ear. Today I want you to kind of see if you can just challenge yourself. Align this tricep up with that inner ear. That'll be harder than pushing the arm behind you. If you push the arm behind you, right, there's a twist, you sway your spine. We're looking for elongated back and front body. Interlace your fingers, turn your palms up. Push your feet back together. Big toe bone, pinky joint, center of the heel. Squeeze the bicep and tricep towards the inner ear and lift. Not forward, up. So if you think about your spinal column the, the, and the spine itself, the bones along the back side, there's the back side that we can touch. Then there's the front side that we can't touch unless we turn this into a saw movie. <laughs> so go to the front side of your spine there. So it's an inch past the, the bone that you can feel and lift that up. Think about the center line of the body, the core of it, rising up. Turn your palms down, change the lacing of the fingers so the opposite side, I didn't bring your arms down, just turn your palms down. Change the lacing of the fingers so the opposite set of fingers are stacked. So if you're right or over your left, you have to change it so left or over right down each finger, or vice versa, then arms up again. Squeeze the bicep in towards the inner ear. Lift up. Put your weight in your sits bones. If you feel your weight starting to go towards the groin, you're gonna start, knees are gonna start floating up. Even though you'll feel more stretch, you will be doing less work. Which is a weird paradigm, but the stretch that you get in your tension in the groin and your low back is actually them gripping to try the smaller muscles to stabilize all the weight of the upper body. All right, yeah, oh good, things are working. Interlace your fingers. Some of you are just holding your arms up in the air. Thank you, Karen. Think the internet can save you from me? Uh-uh. <laughs> Katie, squeeze your elbows towards your ear. Thank you. All right, arms down. Now it's time for the strap. Place the strap around your forearm, around the thickest part of your forearm, not on the wrist, not on the elbow, but try to get that muscle. Hold the strap out in front of you and just break out against the strap. Did your ribs come forward? Did your arms jump forward? Can you pull your humerus bone between the elbow and the shoulder back 
into the socket so your shoulder stays in line with your hip. Can you push your feet in still? Take your thumb and curl your thumb into your palm and push the inside of the thumbnail into the palm as hard as you can to engage your forearm. If you're sitting at a computer a lot, this will help stretch and work these muscles where we get carpal tunnel. It'll also give you a really killer thumb cramp. So pin them in and hold. Break the strap, roll your biceps up as much as you can without shrugging your shoulder forward. The arm retracts back and then rolls out. Take your arm straight up and hold. So can you find the line of your shoulder to your hip and then eventually your elbow to your shoulder, your wrist to your elbow to your shoulder? Move the inner ear back. And what I mean by that is sometimes when people move their head back, they'll tilt their head back or they'll scrunch their chin down and then pull the base of their skull back. It's right from the inner center line, the inner ear. If that pulls back, your whole upper body moves. Now move up and hold, break the strap. So if you look at your elbows, your elbows might be bowing out, but your hands in. Reverse it, bring the elbows in, but move the arms out. The upper forearm actually extends out with that thumb curled into the palm. You're back tired yet? Mm-hmm. Everyone else is back tired yet? No, no one said anything? Well, then we can keep going. We've all got all the energy. Great. No, don't unmute. <laughs> the joke works. All right. Break the strap, pick the arms up, pick up the front side of the spine, mid ribs back. So all if you're here, we've been here almost 18 minutes. This is hard. There's a lot of muscle and back action that has to go into play to use this, especially, you know, we're a little more sedentary right now. We have to pick up the upper body more. We have to work against that pressure of gravity or the slouch posture of sitting or looking at computers or the news like we are. Move the arm back, inner ear in line with the inner, or the tricep in line with the inner ear, shoulder to hip, all right, bring the arms down. That's enough of that. You okay? Great. So now take the strap and you're going to hold it in your right hand. Take it behind you and hang the strap down between your shoulder blades. No. Okay. So get the right arm first. We'll get to the left arm in just a second. But it's going to be the same idea. Move the inner ear back so you feel the back of the head press against the right forearm a little. And then note what happened to your upper body. Did it start to lean forward? Move your mid ribs back. So yes, it will challenge your shoulders, but of course we're trying to be honest with what's going on in your body. So the left arm stretches out to your left. Palm turns to face the world behind you. The palm is not up and then back, right? You can't rotate your arm too external. Palm forward, palm down, palm back. You're going to reverse slap. Tristan is shrugging her shoulder joint forward right now, and she should stop that. But when you stretch the arm, stretch it out to your left side as far as you can reach so the shoulder removes itself from your neck and does not come forward. If your humerus bone juts forward in towards the chest, you're working your neck. Pull the bone back and then move the hand back as far as you can. So it's the chest bone stretch, or the chest bone widens because the muscles of the chest are opening it up. Once you've gone back as far as you can, untwist your rib, lean your mid ribs back because we all stretched our chest out, we backward bended it, and then bend the elbow, swing the arm up, and grab as high up on the strap as you can. Go Mukas. Of the arms at least. We'll get to the leg. But then already check this, shoulder to hip. Inner ear to shoulder, realign that. So the inner ear is moving back, the shoulders are leaning back, the mid ribs are back, the hips are down. And the feet, oh my God, those legs are still working. 
Those of you that want to be able to get your knees on the floor in this pose one day, you're gonna do a lot of this. And for some of you might be feeling this is an immense amount of work on the body. And it is just even structurally setting ourselves up like this. So all the core, all the upper back and the leg muscles are doing the structural holding instead of us slouching into our skeleton or under the smaller muscle groups, so as connective tissue and the like. It's gonna be real fucking hard. Remember what I said at the start, right? You know, yoga shines a light on some of the stuff we're doing. Doesn't always mean it's a great light. Some light is very harsh. I know you're all thinking, please stop pontificating while you're in the middle of this torture. No, but I'm kind. Come on out, switch arms. Woo. Left arm holds the strap down between the shoulder blades. All the legs and all this stuff should still be in the same action. Hey, Dustin. Yeah. Um, so I'm still feeling a lot of like pressure in my, in my hip and groin area. I'm trying to stay in center line. Is there like, there's You're going to have some pressure. It's going to be there. Okay. So that's normal then. That's totally normal. Okay. Well, it's, it's there. Good. I'm happy for you. Thank you for taking time to ask your question. Now get your left arm behind your head. Look at that. Someone jumped in to give you all a moment of rest. Now, kind of. Stretch the right arm out to the right. You can get your thumb into your palm still doing this. It's really quite nasty. Stretch your arm out. Don't let the shoulder roll forward, but lengthen the arm out. Move it back so you feel the chest muscle press the bone open just out to the side. Move it back. And then when you've gone back as far as you can, only then, when you start to feel the shoulder blade flex and cramp, then you bend your elbow and swing your arm up in. Save your poor shoulder joints. If the shoulder blades work, smell the muscle underneath actually. Shoulder to hip. Work your legs harder. And just hold the strap. If you move your inner ear, your shoulders, your, hip, your ribs back, you don't have to work your arms. You don't have to pull on the strap and twist and contort your rib cage. You will find this will work deep into those back muscles and those arm muscles quite thoroughly. And breathe. That a little bit longer. Take a few breaths. Check in with your parts that aren't working. Honor the parts that are right. You know, give yourself a little little bit of a yes. I am doing my. This is burning. That's feeling. I am in that stuff. You know, but then check in with your big toe, your pinky toe joint, your center heel. Check in with your mid ribs, your shoulders, which one doesn't want to quite get into it, which one feels like it's twisted back. Even them out as best you can feel. Move your inner ears back, both of them. And then, you know, take something out of it, whether it's just a breath. Get something out of this for you. Don't just let this work be inflicted on you. We live in a time where it feels like everything is just inflicted on us. This is about you taking for you. Yoga is not a punishment. All right, come on out. Even though God, it feels like it sometimes. Huh. <laughs> Stretch both legs straight out. Ah, oh, thank God, out of body can often find that. So you're still seated on the brick or books or whatever you got. Both legs nice and straight. I prefer a brick, but you know, if you only got a bolster, do what you got. A couple books, that's nice. You okay, Tris? That's nice. Now, just even here in Dandasana, even with the elevation, notice where the body goes. That the ribs tend to slouch in and we tend to kind of compress. Shoulders back, mid ribs back. Make Dandasana happen without the wall to teach like that. So start to use your, your own vision of your body. Don't just look off into the middle distance. Iyengars, like in classes all the time, say don't close your eyes. Look at your body. Use everything you've got to pick up something for yourself. So look at your legs. Is one leg kind of flex, one foot flex back harder than the other? Is one knee pressing down harder than the other? Can you kind of even them out, not by force, but you know, elevate the overlay that one. Do you feel one hip press into the block harder than the other? Stuff like that. This is all kind of interesting insights to what you got. 
And even just here doing that, so you can see Tristan's shaking. I'm sure you've all got your own physical challenges going on. Now stretch both arms straight up and try to keep it all. Nice dandasana. It's harder to get this uh, alignment with the joints in a row, I think, than it is to sit with your back against the wall and hold your arms up for a long time. Because if you're really getting picky about it, and you should, you should always get picky with yourself about what you're doing um, so that you never have to go, well, I don't know why you did that. I'm not saying harp on yourself or beat yourself up, but you know, you're the only one in charge of you. Line everything up. Use your own sight to check your legs. Don't just kind of zen out. I know this is hard. You want to kind of disconnect from the work. Reconnect to it harder. Take in more of this for you. So you may learn something. You may notice, why is my big toe like crooked and twisted off to the side? I didn't think it was doing anything. Why am I gripping in my inner jaw? All right. Take a couple breaths. Bring the arms down. Uh, keep your left leg as it is, elongated. Take your right, bend your right knee, grab a hold of your right foot and pull the top of the foot back so it is alongside your block in what's called hero pose. So it's the top of the foot flat. If you need to sit on something higher, please do. The knee is bent. You should try to bring the knees together. No, I want you to sit. Do the best you can. So the top of the right foot is flat. Look at your right foot, spread the toes out. Look at your right foot and spread your toes out. So when you spread your toes out, take your fingers down there and grab your big toe and pull your left big toe to the right or the right big toe to the left and space out all your toes. Spread them out with your fingers just so they start to feel what that's like instead of clamped and curled under each other. Push your right knee into the floor very hard, hard as you possibly can. You'll feel your pelvis change. And notice your body will probably want to lean forward to do this. That's using your groin and back. Push, flex your right quad and push the femur bone down into the shin, the knee into the floor, the hip into the block. And then move your mid body back. So you realign the shoulder to hip joint. So even if you just worked in this, you're gonna feel a lot happening. Your pelvis has to shift. Your psoas muscles have to change. Your back muscles have to engage very, very differently. When I run my hand along Tristan's back, her left side is moving forward, but her right side is wide from the spine. Take a breath in, you might notice it. If the way your right leg is engaged, you can breathe deeply into the right rib cage. Because when you engage that lift, the muscles of the leg encourage the muscles of the core, which engage the muscles of the back, and so forth, so forth, to take pressure off. in this lovely. All right, hold for another moment or two. Take both arms straight up, palms facing in. And now here where half of the lower body is not matching the other half, can you make it match up here in the mid to upper thoracic? Can you move both shoulders back correctly? Can you move the inner ear back, the mid ribs? So even though you feel that right abdominal wall super flexed but lifted, the left side wants to flex and pull down, pull it all in and up. So you're equally widening the left side of your back equal to the right. Are we aware? Great. I know Tristan is. All right, take a couple breaths. Curl your thumb into your palm and just pin that inner thumbnail right in the center of that palm. Give yourself a cramp. Wake yourself up, right? Like, you know, the, the, the stories of Mr. Angar come by like, like a student or slap their leg or whatever. Right, the teacher's not gonna do that. Wake yourself up. Keep awake of what you're doing, what you're going through. So you can be in control of what you do with it. Arms down. Nicely done. Switch legs, stretch your right leg out first, 
and then bend your left knee, grab the top of the foot, pull it back. Dustin, when you say bring your ear back, my chin is going back. Like, how do I bring Yeah, your whole head goes back. Don't do this. I said, don't chuck your chin down. Keep your chin neutral, right? But then pull your inner ear back so you're moving the whole head back simultaneously. You're not changing the axis of the head or the neck. You're doing that. Make sense? So don't tilt or roll. Think about if you put a finger on each side of the ear on the inner line, just kind of push a little bit and push it back. You'll know where your head needs to go. Like if I came by like in class and put the sides of my hand right up along your ear, just pulled straight, not, not rolling. It's the same contiguous line of movement without that. All right. Thank you for your question. Push your left knee down in the ground. Did you spread your left toes out on your on your foot? You get that pinky. That pinky really wants to hide. Unaccepted. Yeah, get that big toe away from that pinky. Like everyone's kids who are stuck at home, they don't want to play nice together. You got to give it apart. Press the knee down, flex your left quad, press your femur bone to your shin, press your hip down into the block, and then already check in. Feel how that left side's open, it's very stable. The right side, maybe not as much yet. We'll get there, we'll figure it out. Engage your right leg, squeeze the right thigh towards the left. Don't push your knee down if you've been in prior classes. Remember you push through the big toe, the pinky toe joint in the center of the heel. And then you try to stretch that Achilles tendon. Shoulder over hip, and just start working that. Engage into it. Stretch both arms straight out in front of you. Check in, right out in front. And now check your humerus bone. Did it? lunge forward, did it pull the joint? Pull the bone back into the joint. Chest up, lean your chest forward just a hit right there. Arms up. Inner ear moves back. So yes, your chin moves back, but watching here isn't good. Pull, the, pull it all back. And if you pull the inner ear back, you're less likely to pull the chin down into your throat. This is not good looking back. So it's lifted and long. All the muscles of the neck have to hold your skull up. Move the tricep in line with the inner ear. Elbow, shoulder, hip. Take that deep breath. Notice how deep you, the more you work the left leg, the deeper you can breathe into the left rib cage. And try to match it on the right. Can the right leg activate to get the same lift? Can you start getting to that point? And you may just be in the shakiness of your muscles and all of those things. That's okay, it all starts there. You're starting to move and ask stuff to wake up that may not want to. Keep going. Keep going until I'm tired of watching. And I ran out of shows on Netflix, so I'm gonna watch this for a while. All right. Bring the arm down, that's fine. Switch your legs again. So we're going to try a forward fold, but then we're going to change the axis of it. So forward folds are traditionally seated or done where the upper body moves towards the leg. So let's try that from this position first. Squeeze the right knee towards the left knee, left knee towards right. Did you spread your right toes out? Really spread them out. Push your right knee down, right thigh into the shin. Push your hip down. That doesn't mean tuck your hips. Just actually go right into your thut and press your thut into the block. You might feel like your, your buttock lifts a little bit. Arms straight up. Now, here's, here's the game. You get to play with yourself at home. When you move the inner ear back, 
and move the tricep in line with the inner ear. When you fold forward, can you push down so hard in your legs, it feels like your pelvis and your buttock is lifting, so your pelvis rolls way before your spine bends? And can you keep your arms in line with your inner ear so your upper back doesn't get to round and pull you down, but your lower body lifts your upper body up so you're extending into a long line. So you get this extension of the pose without it being collapsed. All right, let's go. Work those legs. Left big toe, pinky toe, heel stretching for the world away from you. Lean over. Tilt over, work your legs harder. Check in with at what point your legs drop out because I guarantee that's when your arms come down. And did your tricep unalign from the inner ear? I say yes. Keep going, stretch out. You may not get to your hands to your foot. I never said you would. I just said you'd go forward. Now, when you go forward, take a breath, check in with your ribs. Did your ribs push forward? Pull your mid ribs back. So even though, the plane and the angle of the shoulder to hip alignment has changed. Your front body can't collapse forward. So pull your mid ribs back so it feels like you're rounding your middle back. Pick your arms up higher and stretch your heart out further. And you will burn. <laughs> this is not an easy pose to hold. The day you can get your chest to your thigh, then you can grab your foot. That's your goal. Take a belly breath. Pull your abdomen up. Stretch your chest out further. Take your arms up. Come on up. Well done. Arms down, switch the legs. Let's do the other side real quick. Then we'll go on to the next pose. Not easy, huh? So that keep learning to keep that extension is very challenging for the body because we want to work our shoulder and neck. We, we don't use our core muscles to pick us up, to widen the back. When we do forward folds and our legs aren't as engaged, the back narrows, the muscle grips to the spine to protect the spine, good enough, but it reduces mobility. We want both, stability and mobility. So you've pulled the left knee back, I hope. Spread your toes out. Push the knee down, the quad into the shin, the thut, that space between your thigh and your butt down into the block. Arms up, work your right leg too. Inner ear moves back, arm moves back to line up the tricep with the inner ear. When you start to go forward, work your legs with all the focus so they pick your pelvis up and your pelvis does the extension forward first, not your arms. Your arms are the last thing to ever move in this. Their entire job is to stay in line with that ear. Go forward, everybody. Do the best you can. Of course, you could break a strap between the arms to help this and lots of things, but right now, just do it. Do it without that. Take a deep breath. Notice how your ribs want to come forward. Take your belly breath, pull your abdomen up, your mid ribs back. So even though it feels like you're rounding your middle back, you can work your legs more and stretch your body out over the leg. Then pick your arm up, heart out. Launch yourself off of those legs, basically. The legs are just basically a launch pad to extend the spine. Very good. Roll your right thigh interest and don't lose it. Well done. Take a couple deep breaths. Get something out of this. Squeeze your finger into your palms to wake up. All right, come on up. Good. Switch legs again. Good. 40 minutes in. No one's died on camera yet. Tristan feels like it, I think. Thighs tight. Spread your right toes out. Not just with your toes. Use your hands to actually move those things. You wouldn't, if you could do it without your hands as well as your hands can do, you wouldn't need to be in yoga class. I assume because you're all here, you have to use your hands to move your toes still. Thumbs up. Line up the inner ear with the arm. Move the inner ear back to challenge the arm. Come on, guys, arms up. Thank you. The chin is not down, chin is neutral. The central line of the head moves back. Get out of your neck. 
Put it in your upper back where it belongs. Notice you're getting tired now. So you're starting to sway. Line yourself up. The bend is gonna happen down here in the hip, not up here in your back, not yet. Exhale, forward. Work your right leg, push that right thigh down, all that jazz, extend. Keep those arms nice and high with the ear. And then when you feel like you can't go any further, pause, re-engage the front mid body back to widen, and then take that deep belly breath and lift, use the abdomen to lift and extend the spine deeper out into the pose. Arms up, Tris. There you go. Work your leg, two more seconds. Exhale, up you go. Keep your right leg and le left leg as it is. Bring the arms down for a moment. So I'm gonna talk Tristan through this. Watch for a moment and then, you know, I'll, I'll have you all do it. So you're gonna stay in the same pose with the, legs, uh, uh, with the right foot in hero pose. You're gonna bend your left knee, pulling your left foot close to your body. You're gonna reach down with both hands and grab your left foot. One hand can grab on each side of the foot. You don't have to grab the toes. If you can, use one hand to grab the big toe and the other hand to grab the pinky toe point that keeps hopscotch from push. That's real good. That's, that's taking some teachings and modifying your toes to learn it better. Every opportunity you have to get some more out of this. So now, I would like for you to pick your shin up and your foot up off the floor so your, your shin is parallel to the floor. So when she did this, she probably didn't have her right leg engaged because she probably feels how much her hips have twisted and pulled her into this. The left hip tends to go back. My leg was blocking the magical moment, so she comes right down with the leg. She re-evens out her hips. Engage the right leg, push the right thigh knee down, pick the shin up. Way harder now, because now it can't be on your low back. Feel the difference? What's the difference? Her hip is cramping, which hip? Oh, it's a left hip Christmas miracle. So wait, wait at home, watch a second. Push your big toe into your hand, push your pinky toe joint into your hand, then stretch your heel into your hand, but retract your arm back into the socket. So the shoulder and hip stay in alignment. Now stretch the leg up, but without the shoulder coming forward. You're working hard now. Are we aware? Good, so now the fold has happened, but now the upper body's not into it. The legs must learn to ascend into it. Great, bring your leg down, good job. They're all applauding you, I know, you just don't do it. To your mats. You all shouldn't have left them anyway. Right shin pulled back in hero pose, left knee bent, foot flat to the floor. Do the best you can. If you need to use a strap to hold onto the foot, by all means, use anything you need to get this up and start practicing what it is to keep the shoulder above the hip and to move everything on the deep range of motion of your hip and all of that tight muscle inside of it. All right, grab the foot. Let's have some magic. Right hand grabs left big toe, left hand grabs pinky toe joint. Push both into the hands. Already, just start to set your shoulders up to succeed. Retract the humerus bone into the shoulder joint. Lean back. As you start to lean back, push the foot against the hand. If your foot's just kind of warped here, there's no action. Push it again hard to make a continuous line of energy and action and muscle so that when you retract and pick up, it's on the fold of the hip, not the collapse of your spine. Take your shins up, work that foot. Push it in that hand harder. If you look at your ankle that's up in the air right now, you can't see it on the camera, but Tristan's have has what, a, what I call a case of sharp pink like a wrinkle. The more you push your foot against your hand and these lines smooth out, you're gonna know you're in, into the action of the pose. You'll feel it deeper down into your hip. Push that foot against the hand, not overly extended, because right, you have the three parts. Push, and then you'll see, if you see crinkles on one side versus the other, you'll know which, uh, which digit you're not working. Good. Retract the, the arm into the socket of the joint. Work your right leg harder. When you lifted your leg up, was your right leg working? It wasn't on her the first time, and she's not having as much trouble this time, so I bet it wasn't this time either. So everyone bring your left foot down. <laughs> Grab your left foot. We're not done, don't get rid of it. 
work your right leg, push your right femur bone down, your right knee down and in, really engage that leg. So you do not go into this. Retract, push the foot against the hand, pick the leg up now with the right leg intensely active. It's gonna be hard. It might even be so hard that you have to, you know, get a hip cramp, get upset, get frustrated, but get something out of it. See the difference? Huh? She's in it. So just hold this. You're gonna feel it work deep down into the crease of this hip joint where the femur bone is actually moving against all that tight muscle that really kind of pushes forward when we oversway our spine. When you start to straighten the leg, it is not out. The leg actually pushes that way, but it will go up only by this arm, both arms retracting back. Hold that arm, don't sway your shoulders back, but just retract the shoulder back by pulling the arm into the socket. Because if you sway back, you're just, like I said, sway back, but flex the arm and pull it into the socket so these two points meet and stay connected. And then push the foot against, Pull the arm back against, and you will be deep in the bend and work, but it will not come from your spine. Hold for a few seconds, take a couple breaths, get something out of this, don't disconnect. Check in with yourself what you're doing good. You're still here, so there's that. Check in with yourself what you need to work on. That's the easy one, so let's not dwell on it. Take a breath, out you go. Well done, pull your left foot back, stretch your right leg out. There she goes. Now we're getting the hands separating those toes. All right. Bend the right knee. Right hand grabs right and left hand grab right big foot. Big foot, big toe. Let's grab your foot. Been a long day already. So we're gonna go up twice at least. First time, try to do as much as you can, then I'm gonna get all the points and we're gonna make it harder. So exhale, pick your right shin up the, uh, so your shin is the height of your knee. Check in with yourself. Once your shin's up, is your foot pressing actively against the hand? Do you have sharp a puppy foot? Do you have those crinkles around the ankle? Push through the big toe, not the joint, but the toe itself. The pinky toe joint, the center of the heel. So the, the, the ankle smooths, the muscle stretches and expands so it takes the skin smoother. Did you work your left leg when you started and kept it as the whole way or did you just get it up and then kind of ask it to work? And then check in with your shoulders. Is, are you twisting your ribs back to make up for the arm not engaging back? I can tell on Tristan, she's working her right side harder than her left. She's pulling her left side down and her right side. So she needs to bend her elbows a little bit and retract the bone into the sock better. And then I can tell her right hip's tired. You get a little bit of a twist. So feel your own hips on the block. Can you even them out, not left to right, you know, you're gonna have the unequal pressure, but where they are in relationship to front to back of the block. Most of us, the right hip rolls back. Can you roll your right hip forward slightly? If I came behind and pushed on it. A few more seconds. Nice, come on down. Don't get rid of the leg, keep the pose for a few more seconds. Take a breath, grab the foot again. Now really make this left leg do the greater part of the work. Let this leg help pick you up. Before you even start lifting, push the foot into the hands. Set your shoulders, set your upper spine to not kind of make up. So it's not just pushing your, your shoulder joint back. Flex the bicep, tricep, go to the gun show, and pull all of that muscle and move the bone from the sleeve of muscle, pulling it back. Then up you go. Work the left leg down, knee down, thigh down, in, and just lift. Get what you have to get out of this. You might find your hips tired. You may not find this one moves easier or harder, but get something out of it for you. Remove the Sharpe puppy foot. Big toe presses into the hand. Pinky toe joint presses into the hand. Center the heel, stretches away. 
the front, back, inner, and outer leg are working. What we've covered for the last three weeks. If you haven't seen it, go to the YouTube channel. All of these videos are up there. Spread your big toes. Okay. She's like, okay. Retract the bone back. Always engaged here. The, the sleeve of muscle of the arm pulls the bone into the socket. And now push the foot against the arm and let the leg ascend, whatever degree you can. And it may not go fully. It is more important to keep all these other alignment pieces right now, the, the lower leg engaged correctly. So your pelvis to shoulders are in line, your inner ear moving back. And then whatever happens with the right leg happens. All right, take a breath. Come on out. Well done. Ah. So that's a forward fold where the leg comes to you. Come on off your blocks. Turn and face the camera. Stand up up where you are. Baddha Konasana, feet together, knees wide. Have a seat on the floor. I would make sure there's nothing right behind you that you wouldn't want to fall on. You're okay. Like if, if you're, there's a couch behind you or something like that, that's nice because you might fall back and you can so, so soften in that. But small dogs, props, things like that, I would move. Feet together, knees wide. Take your index and middle finger, curl them, and grab your big toe on each foot with the fingers on the inside. The middle finger goes on your stomach point and your second of the first leg. So you're holding on to your feet like that in Baddha Konasana as Tristan's doing. And already notice for some of us, we're either way far back or we're way forward. Look, look at your shoulder, look at your hips, try to figure out where your shoulder is in line with your pelvis. If you've got someone there practicing with you, help each other out, check each other out. Mid ribs back to help too. So you put your weight into your sits bones. If you pull your mid ribs back, you might feel like your shoulders are slouching forward. When your mid ribs are back, you have to actively pull the, the bone back into the socket again. So you start to feel like you could almost lift. So Tristan's going to lean back just ever so slightly and then float her feet up off the floor. And you should all join her. If I had a microphone on I'd, and I could move away from the laptop, I would do it, but no. If you got it, heels off the floor if you can. Push your feet hard together. The legs are still active as they were when you're on the block, right? Pull the arm into the socket so your chest opens, yeah? You with us? Okay, here we go. Try as best you can. Push your right chin parallel in front of you. Push the foot against the hand, and then lift. Still left ankle floating up off of the floor. Right chin, chin up, not out to the side, right in front of you. So the leg does not drift off to the side. Keep it center line as much as you can. And notice the other foot wants to kind of creep over. Keep it open. If the heel needs to come to the floor to balance so you can work your right leg better, by all means, go for it. Heart, retract the arms into the socket. Use everything you got from class today. All that muscle that's tired. Get something for yourself. And even here, with the right fingers holding that big toe, curl your thumb and push it into your palm. And that may make you fall. Bring your leg down. Feet together, knees wide. Reset. Hook the big toe. Finger Just in a week. Hey, leaning back so that we're yes. actually like are on a diagonal, right? Not really, not a lot, maybe an inch. Just a little bit, yeah, okay. A little, you're not, you're not from here, you're not here. Oh, okay. You're just like, here's straight. Yeah. You're like that. You have to use your legs. Okay. Up. You're not. You're resisting. Yeah, you're not on your sacral plate or your tailbone. You're shifting towards the back sides of your sit bone. Okay. Again, grab the big toes. Lean back. 
but before you lean back, don't slouch, pull the arms in, find your pelvis, roll your pelvis with your upper body moving with it all at the same time. Float the feet. Very good. All right, left foot, get it out in front of you. Feet in. Push the foot against the hand. Even that foot, the right foot still pushes against the hand, even though it's kind of in the bent action. It's an active leg. And then if you want to try and straighten it up, it goes up. Bring the feet together. Don't fall out of the pose if you can. Do both shins out in front of you and up. Push the foot against the hand. If any part of your leg and foot is not active in this, you're, you're not bouncing on your pelvis. You're putting in your spine. Retract the arm into the socket and work the strength of your legs against the arm and you will find up happens. Nice hike. Nice. And then for a few seconds, have fun. Open the legs wide. Very good. Boy, Emma. <laughs> what is this? That's what you were black. Feet together. Well done. All right. Um, lay on your back, grab a block, put it under your sacral plate. Sacral plate, if you are not aware, I assume you are, but if you don't, if you're seeing this on YouTube or whatever, I would like for you to take the block flat. It's the lowest height of the block. I don't care how flexible you are, how badass you are at yoga, just follow along. Take the block flat under your sacral plate. The sacral plate is not down here at the tailbone. It is not up here at your lower spine. It is right at the top of your gluteal cleft. And just gently, this is not a big hard flex, just Draw the shoulders in a little bit and then try to relax so the flesh of the arm and the flesh of your back is kind of tucked under you. And then let your neck go, let your back go. And lay here with your eyes closed for a couple minutes. Talk it through a little bit of you know, uh, internal journaling during this time. Take your feet about hip width apart, let your knees relax towards each other. If you have to squeeze your knees together, don't force it, but the feet a little wider, lets the thighs tilt in so the knees relax the board. There's a lot of language um, that comes out of the traditions of yoga and Buddhism and uh, any of the spiritual practices that have a, a prophetic figure in history or things like that that talk about a new age coming or um, something, sh some great shift or changing. I think so often it can be perceived as that is what is supposed to happen to the world. And I think really the story of the great shift or the great change or the energy changing, right, is more about what happens uh, inside ourselves. We are our, our own world. And I know there's a lot of language out there about children are our world or my family is my world. That's, that's all good and well. But you don't get to have all of those things unless you exist. You're the sun, everything else around you is a satellite in this moment. So when you go through work like this and you get challenged and you find great joy in it, like some of us do, or great uh, emotional struggle or cramping, or we wanna run away or we wanna dive into it, that's a great shift changing in your world. And even though it can be easy to feel small, when we have powerful feelings, when we have fears and joy and sadness, it can feel like the only thing in the world. We first fall in love, when we lose somebody, when we're so angry, it feels like it can be the only thing that is because in that moment, it really is. 
each story of prophecy of big changes of energy shifting like right shiva does the dance that destroys the world and changes it every time you get in the mat it's a chance to make that prophecy real for you each time you come into the practice it's an opportunity to kind of let your own inner shiva do that so you're living the philosophy. You're not waiting for the world to change and you get the benefits of it. Your world, the power of your emotion, all the energy that all of those contain, that each feeling has, and the myriad, the dozens and hundreds of different types of happy, sad, angry, fear, shame, all of it, all of that gets a chance to percolate, to churn, and create great change in us. So my friends, did you get anything out of that work that's a shift for your world? Or maybe a little bit of an insight to something going on in you, physically, mentally, emotionally, that you can work with to continue that, that process of change. Sometimes, you know, uh, the biggest bangs start with the smallest spark. So just for the next minute, see your world, everything that you've created around you, how you've gotten to where you are in your life, all that you are. And if any energy came up for you, if anything began to change for you, recognize it and maybe welcome it and bless it for what it is. Because change is inevitable. And waiting for the world change to suit where we are, selfish. And I'm not saying change to go along with the, the, the flows of life, but if you really want something for you, can you give it to yourself inside your own world? Can you shift and change your own energies, the power of your feelings, strength of your work? so that you own it and empowered by it and eventually harness it and give it to the world around you. Take a nice deep breath in, lift your hips up, lower your pelvis down to the floor, roll to your right side on an exhale. Take another deep breath in, laying on your right side, letting your head hard adjust. Bring yourself back to the cognitive moment with empowered by all the things that you are, all the myriad of powers, feelings, emotions, thoughts, processes, and experiences, and up you come. All right, so I'll unmute everybody. If you wanna ask questions for a minute or two, Tristan and me, or the dog. Great, now it's time to do so. Um. I have a question, Dustin. Hi, Jacqueline, how are you? I'm well, thank you, how are you? A yang pandemic dream. So it's a super challenge. What's that? I said a Yangar makes me feel super frustrated. It's a super challenge. Yeah. Um, I felt a lot of discomfort in actual like hip flexor. Is that normal? Because normally the back is compensating and that muscle isn't active. Yes. The hip flexors have to begin to shift and change uh, to, to get out of the, they have to start flexing and re-engaging and that can cause some discomfort and cramping. And that, that does go away. It took me like six months before it started to really recede, and it hasn't come back since. Okay, thank you. Justin was having the same thing. Hey, Dustin. Anyone else? 
Uh, pretty much the same thing in the Vata Kornasan, the inner groin was so painful. I had to put myself up on another brick. Yeah. And eventually I had to take a strap, Dustin, and put it around my knees to support a little so that my knees fell less. Yeah. And I could relax the groin more. Mm -hmm. Is it a good setup? That is a good modification. Yes. As long as you still kept you still felt your thighs flex and work and your your lift of your spine, that's good. More height, more props, whatever it takes. Okay. Time in the pose is better than intensity in the pose, in my opinion. That's why I, you know, like you were all stuck in some of these for like five minutes. It's not that I couldn't teach you more poses. It's just, you know, why not yeah. take some time and deep dive into this, right? All right. Very good question. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. Uh, What's up, John? So when uh, my head, head behind the back and pulling with the strap, um, yeah. my both times my right arm was like tingling and falling asleep, both when it was above me and when it was behind me. It was the same arm. Uh, that, that tells me you probably got something going on in the right shoulder. Uh, the trapezius muscle here and the girdle back here. The, when when we get a lot of tingling and numbness, it's right across the front side of the arm here. When it gets pressure on it like this, it presses the nerve that that runs into the hand, and that's where we're going to get tingling and numbness. So for you, when you had the arm behind you, instead of trying to push it across harder, I would actually pull your right elbow out and try to make as much space here on the front, separating the chest muscle from the joint itself so it widens. And then as this can stay open, then you move the arm into place, but don't let this shrink. Always open that up so that nerve never gets compressed. And the same thing up here, right? If the arm's behind us, it can still shrink down, right? It pulls forward like this. So you take the arm out to the side so you can open that broadness of the chest to shoulder joint and then it moves back, and then over time, it moves across. Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yes, so it does. More space. Right. Anyone else? Yep. Hey, Justin. Hi, Caitlin. Um, first of all, wow. Wow. Um, but I was having a lot of trouble with, like, uh, with the one leg behind you, one leg in, uh, in front of you bent, trying to lift that up. Um, I kept falling out of it. I was trying to make sure I had all, everything engaged, but maybe I was just trying to go too high when my limit is very Yeah, I mean, it, it is about finding balance in the pelvis. Um, hypermobility makes stability very challenging. You and I are both hypermobile people, so I know what you're coming from here. So when you're in it with the foot back in hero pose and the leg straight, so this is actually called Tranga Mukhapada, don't worry about spelling it. But when you're in that position and you're starting to lift up, even if you're here and you feel balanced, but the minute you start to straighten, if you fall, that tells me that muscles in your, your body aren't staying stable. So it's better to work here longer, right? With everything retracting, you can like, I can hold this and I've got the balance. Build that endurance and then kind of learn to inch it and hold, inch it and hold, inch it and hold. So you build that stability. So at no point does some stuff quit and everything else grips and you fall down. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Just some time to, to move through it. The, process, the practice is not just getting to the end pose. The practice is practicing all the stages of it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you, Tristan, <laughs> for showing us. <laughs> yeah, she's doing great. You saw me struggle to lift my foot too. It was it was challenging. You said. Yeah, I, I couldn't. I, did, I couldn't hear what you said. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there were points where she. I thought she was going to just out and out rebel against me. Like. <laughs> yeah, that was intense for me. So. It's it's a very intense. A series of stuff, but it is very, very good for your hips and back. Like, you know, how's your body feel right now? I feel lighter. Yeah. Um, but I wow. also feel like I need to continue to work um, on it because it's it's not like an instant. Right. It's not instant coffee. 
<laughs> yeah, not instant coffee. <laughs> yeah. Well, for anybody, also, if this was a really challenging class, it's also possibly because um, your fight or flight reflexes are probably just going off all the time right now because we're in a pandemic and it's scary um, and whatever else is going on and that's all in your hips too. Hmm. Yeah, those hips. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's talking from her own experience. Let's clarify. This is her experience that she's offering an insight. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Hips really stock fear. I've got a question about the same posture. Sure. Uh, Justin, well, I actually had to take a strap because if I wanted to be honest with myself and keep my pelvis, I had to take a strap. But once I got the strap and I started to go up, I started looking at the knee of the leg that was trying to extend, which yeah. looked something like a watermelon, you know, it was like really puffy. And right. is it correct to think in that knee of kind of like you're squeezing out a sponge? In the knee? In the knee. Mm -hmm. um, because if I just push into the knee, that's not going to work. No, right? you can't put the knee shouldn't be pushed into it all. When you're extending the leg up, the yeah. work comes. I want your work to come from your foot first. Focus here on the big toe, pinky toe joint pushing. Right. So there's the elongation, right. and then you stretch the heel, yeah. and then the quad lengthens. This knee is a sponge in the sense that it is soft and squishy. It is not okay. pressing or pushing at all. I'm working the foot and the foot. thigh. And the thigh. Oh, so you feel the quad actually pulling back into the crease. Correct. Okay. Thank That's you. what keeping your pelvis balanced on the block shows you. Okay. Good. Good questions, everybody. Anyone else for a go? I've got a lasagna waiting, so. Oh, nice. <laughs> What's that, Ryan? Watching WrestleMania. Uh, no, no, no. It's okay, man. I've got other wrestling. I've got stuff to do. I, I will watch it, though, and we'll, I'll catch up with you, okay? Sounds good, man. All right. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. I'll see you all Tuesday. If you have any questions, you know where to reach me. You know, have a great weekend. Practice a little bit. Ein, Ein says hello. He's, he's here to see everyone off after class. <laughs> Good boy. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.